Hey everybody, it's Never. So I'm here, <laughs> waiting for the Alliance to get their act together with Moonfang. It's, it's been a real mess. But I wanted to talk today about a very special pet, one of my favorite pets, the Unborn Valkyr. This is pretty well regarded as the coolest looking pet of all of them. And I think it's pretty cool. So this pet not only looks amazing, but it's also got a really cool set of abilities. I use it in this group with my uh, my super bomb team. Um, the abilities this has, Shadow Shock and Shadow Slash are nothing really special. Curse of Doom is pretty cool. Siphon Life is cool, but these two abilities here are the ones that you really want this for. Haunt is pretty good, but the amazing ability is Unholy Ascension. Essentially, this pet kills itself and then puts a debuff on the entire enemy team increasing the damage they take by 25% for 9 rounds, which is usually long enough to kill anything. So, what you do is, by putting this up first, everything else you do is 25% stronger. And that's uh, that adds up with Howl, which doubles the damage for a really big truckload of damage to stuff like Beasts of Fable or other, or other legendary pets where it takes an entire team to take down a single pet. So the Unborn Valkyr, um, it's tricky to get. It takes a lot of a lot of work and a lot of trouble to get. What you essentially want to do is you need to head over to Northrend. There are three places in each zone where it can spawn, but um, I'm going to recommend a specific uh, set of places to look at because they're the easiest ones to fly around in and check on. So you're going to want to park in Crystal Song Forest, and this is best if you can do this with uh, with a couple of alts that you have. So Crystal Song Forest, it's, they're actually really close together. These little undead markers are where it spawns. You'll want to check each one of these. And then in Sholazar Basin, the same thing you want to check up here, over here, and down here, so just in a circle. And then finally in Ice Crown, it's, uh, there's one down here, one up here, and then there's uh, one right over here. And if you just make those three circuits, you can get you can look in other places. Um, for example, Zoldrak is uh, oh, where's that third one? Uh, there's another one in Zoldrak. Oh, here it is, Zoldrak up there. So if you have um, Pet Tracker, which shows that stuff, uh, you can look for that and camp out for the Valkyrie. It took me about a week of just checking now and then to get uh, to get a Valkyrie and you can't really be picky with the breed on Valkyries because they're so rare I was fortunate enough not to get one with speed so mine's just got a lot of health which is really great but it's that it's that ability that you want which doesn't really matter for stats so what I did was I took a few other characters that I had that were uh, one of them was really low level and didn't actually fly around the zone at all, just parked it by the safest spot in the zone. And then, whenever I had a moment, I'd just log into each of those characters and see if it was there. If it was there, I'd get my uh, terrible turnip out and make sure to catch the pet, and that's all it was. And it doesn't matter the quality, you're going to use a flawless stone on it. So, uh, that's how you get the Unborn Valkyr, the... Uh, arguably overall favorite pet of pet collectors in the game. It's a really worthwhile thing to do because it will make your uh, your kind of explosion teams look at that. Never is lucky today. I am so glad that all of you are here to witness this with me. I finally got lucky while making a video and I managed to land a pet that I have been after for months. Moon Moon. If you aren't familiar with what Moon Moon is, go to knowyourmeme.com, knowyourmeme.com, and look up Moon Moon, and you'll see this hilarious image macro and a couple of uh, other uh, jokes about Moon Moon. It's just wonderful, and then you'll absolutely love the whole idea. If if Moon Moon was a troll, you'd name him Mon Mon. So, Moon Moon, is, like Mr. Bigglesworth, is a pet that I will never rename. 
So we've got a carry pet now on our open team, and he is damaged. He's going to be wonderful, and I'm going to level him up, even though he's actually not that good of a battle pet. And so in order to level him up, we've got to go somewhere where we can level pets up. All right, so normally I would level this pet up with starting with the Pandaren Spirits just so that I have a chance at getting the one that I don't have. But because I want to be like extra awesome today, I'm going to show you how to level this pet up. I'm going to level Moon Moon from 1 to 25 in one video in one quick little stunt that really won't take very long and I'm going to show you how to do that. So this requires, to do it this quickly, requires a safari hat which by the time you're doing most of these you'll probably have the safari hat. Um, additionally you're going to want to use some uh, pet XP sausages that you get from doing the Beast of Fable. If you don't use the pet XP sausage it'll take a couple more uh, a couple more fights but not too many this is really just for the sake of time Seeker Zushi he's just a fish face guy like Admiral Akbar you can't use traps on him ha 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 uh, oh yeah okay so we just want to have our electrified razor tooth or like uh, one of the uh, crocodiles from the fishing quest with uh, one two three uh, specifically rip in blood in the water and then something else I like devour and then lift off uh, I'm using Cenarian Hatchling you need lift off so for him it's one two and two we're gonna get his quest hopefully he gives us something useful probably won't alright so we're gonna start off with our superstar combo of rip and blood in the water I consider blood in the water to be one of the most satisfying abilities in the game. Because look at that. He bleeds everywhere and he just takes a buttload of damage. It's wonderful. Sometimes Devour will kill him on the first bite. And if that happens, then it's going to toss up your. Um, it's going to toss up what you do this first turn a little bit but essentially you're gonna die as soon as he uh, comes back up from dive anyway but you don't want to waste blood in the water right now is my point if dive misses you want to make sure that you didn't do that so um, just use another rip dive will probably kill him but if it doesn't you want to be ready with that blood in the water if it misses but it didn't and so uh, this is normal we're gonna switch over to this guy the idea is we want to kill him before he uses dive again so we want to use the strongest ability we've got against him so that we don't have to waste lift off because if we do we're gonna be sad because we really need it for the next guy we're fighting this fight can be a little dicey but um, most of the time it goes pretty easily so he's going to uh, he's gonna do soothe and then the next turn after that you want to use lift off but other than that you just want to use peck or something strong against him to burn him up he's gonna do his heal first that's fine we out damage it so that's the sleep so now I want to use lift off so that when that thing procs I'm up in the air and then I smash his face in that's okay hooray and so that's that moon moon's gonna jump up to like level a billion except that I forgot to switch to him during that turn. I just made this harder on myself because I didn't even switch to Moon Moon in the middle. I knew I forgot something. So if I didn't switch to him, he didn't get XP, which means I just gave you a free pet strategy without even leveling my pet up. Alright, so be it. We're going to head off and show you another pet strategy. And this time I'm actually going to level my pet up. All right, over here is Aki the Chosen, or Aki the Chosen, I don't care how you say it. So we are going to want, um, essentially, we want something with leap. And I like to use uh, the Alpine Foxling with, um, oh, with bite. Yeah, so one, two, and one. Bite, howl, and leap. 
And then Clockwork Gnome with the only setup you ever use, which is one, one, one. And then finally, Carry Pet at the end, because this fight's really weird. This fight's actually super annoying, and it's one of the one of the dodgiest fights that you'll end up doing. But so we're gonna go for it. This time we'll actually get Moon Moon some XP. So the first thing we're gonna do is howl. And then we're just going to spam usually howls up again by the time you do that. So now, the first thing we're gonna do is just another howl. You need the buff from Leap at the end so that howl goes off first, because uh, Call Lightning's gonna kick the crap out of that thing. He's just dead. There's nothing you can do. So, you get this guy out. Now you're gonna think, oh man, I've got this buff. I just totally want to pound his face in with the Metal Fist, but no, no. You want to use the turret. The turret is the magic here. This guy's gonna finish off both of them. The lightning thing makes it so that turret is packing a punch. You see that? That's just crazy. And so now we're gonna punch him in the face and we still get to do a big old metal fist, don't you worry. Look at that. And then the turret's gonna finish him off. Now here comes the tricky part. This stupid otter. So we don't have any more super powerful uh, things anymore. We've just got to make sure we keep building turrets. Turrets are the thing that are going to make you survive this. Look how both of them wear his health down pretty efficiently. Then we're going to punch him in the face. That surge is a real beast. Now the only thing we need to make sure is that Surge doesn't kill us. And now it's just surviving one more round so that that thing fades off. Like I said, this is a pretty... If you get lucky and you can kill him before he uses that, it's a lot easier. But most of us just aren't that lucky. But it doesn't matter. All the XP for Moon Moon. So he just went from level 1 to level 12. And that's how you do Aki the Chosen. It's kind of dicey. You might need to give it a couple of goes. But I find that maybe three quarters of the time I get it on my first try. And the other quarter of the time, that is just life. Okay, this guy's a fat monkey. He's actually not fat. He's just annoying. He's really not that hard. He's a... He's kind of a unique strategy. This is going to be fun. You need Dark Moon Zeppelin with one, two, two. Chrominius with one, one, two, and your carry pet. This is real straightforward, real, real solid strategy with not a lot of variance to it. So we're going to shoot a missile at his face. Look how good that is. And then we're going to put up decoy to block his little burrow thing. Ha ha, and more missiles in your face. Pop, pop. Crunch. And another missile in his face. He's just helpless. Sometimes you'll even kill him on that missile, but it doesn't matter. You shoot him again. All right. This is, this is going to be fun. Switch to switch to Chromanius. That's okay, not a problem. You're gonna howl. And then just blow the living daylights out of him. Lasers! <laughs> just look at that. That's almost double his health. Okay. 
So we're just going to try and hit this guy, but he's going to kill us before we can do anything. And that's okay. Switch right back to the Zeppelin. And, um... Oh, which is it? There's one that we want. We want to wait till headbutt is... Wait till headbutt is about to happen again, and that's what you're going to want to decoy. And, in, and if you're not doing that, you're just shooting him in his turtley face with missiles. It's kind of like, how do you beat the Ninja Turtles? Shoot them with missiles. That works really well. Alright, so headbutt's about to come off of uh, cooldown. So we're going to put up decoy for this turn. He's faster, so we'll let him use the decoy. Ha ha. But actually, that doesn't matter. So now, he's below 620 health. So we just blow ourselves up. And normally, that would kill you if, if the decoy wasn't there. It's okay. You'll just use your come back to life thing. And that blows up, kills the Zeppelin, and all the XP goes to Moon Moon, who is now level 17 after two fights. Okay, Farmer Nishi is another panda a lot of them here alright we want to have a strider of some kind with uh, one two two so a water jet cleansing rain and pomp carry pet and then one one two on the dark moon tonk this fights pretty fun as well so first thing we're gonna do is pump so that this thing can cast its little sunlight deal and then we're just going to Cleansing Rain to cancel that action out. And then you always want to double tap Pump after the first time you use it. So we're going to use it again to blow the crap out of that thing. And then we're going to use it again to charge up our Fireball, or well, Water Ball in this case. See, he's recovering after that, so you didn't even get hit. Now you shoot him with the Water Jet and he's dead. So this guy comes out first thing we do hit him in the face with pump just like that and that's okay see now we can't hit him with anything so we're gonna refresh cleansing rain and heal up a little bit a little bit still can't hit him with anything so we're just gonna charge pump again and now we're gonna water jet and kill him so, now this guy comes out, and water jet. Nope, not water jet. Pump. Oh, it missed. Well, that's cute. So, we're probably going to die because he's going to burrow, but we're going to attempt a pump just in case the burrow misses. It'd be nice if that hit him. But, nope, we're not so lucky. So, now we get to do this just with the Dark Moon Tonk, you know, as if it would be hard. Oh, I forgot we gotta switch to the carry pet. Normally you'd switch to the carry pet and you'd have even less, uh, you'd have an extra round on burrow, but we're not so lucky, so it's gonna be tough for us. Alright, shock and awe. Missed. Great. So we've got, normally if shock and awe hits, then you just go straight into ion cannon, but since we're not lucky at all, we need to do this the hard way and shoot missiles at him first because see shock or ion cannon does like a thousand damage so you got to make sure he's got less than a thousand health it's okay we managed it our team's a little extra strong for this guy so you can see that that went wrong in just about every way that you could normally expect it to and moonfang is level 21. okay next is hyuna of the shrines and while we're getting her we're gonna i'm gonna tell you what we're using we're using the emerald proto whelp with two two one carry pet and scenarian hatchling or something that can fly like a moth that has uh, well flying abilities uh, like cocoon strike or lift off so for this guy it's one two and two so start off with emerald presence now this thing can barely hurt us at all and then we're just gonna emerald bite a bunch of times well twice actually two emerald bites might seem arbitrary but it matters oh we need to actually have it hit again 
All right, then we're going to refresh this. We want it refreshed the turn before we kill that thing. So now we're going to go ahead and kill that thing. Okay, very good. So, now, one Emerald Bite. It's good to do that because this buff is up. And then, Proto Strike to dodge the burrow. The reason we did that is now this will last just as long as possible against this so that we have a good chance of doing one more bite and killing the snake off. You just want to make sure that it's that the Emerald Proto can survive enough to kill this or nearly kill it. So uh, you want to make sure you don't actually kill this guy and you usually won't but it's nice to have him suck or soak that ability. <laughs> suck. Alright so carry pet and then over here and now it's pretty straightforward we're going to use lift off to dodge headbutt and otherwise we're just going to peck his eyes out look at that see he just it takes forever to kill him he's got two defensive abilities and one offensive ability so now we're going to do this he's going to try to headbutt oh i did it too soon i forgot i'm faster than him so now he's going to headbutt me i'm so lucky that missed you're going to do the lift off the same turn he would do headbutt because you're faster than him. It's hard to remember things. See, look how much he heals. It's really kind of twerpy. This time we'll do it right because of the cooldown. Cocoon Strike actually has a lower cooldown than lift off, if I remember right, so that makes it a little easier. But... Um, Generally, he doesn't do very much damage, and so you can live through it. It's just a matter of outlasting his heals and his damage reduction. But one more and we should have it, because I don't think he can heal himself yet. So, finally! Alright. Hooray, we did it! And Moon Moon gets another pile of XP. He's now level 23. Wastewalker's shoe is aptly named. Because whenever I'm around him, I just want to be like, Shoo! Go on! Get out of here! For Wastewalker's shoe, I'm not going to lie. I don't have a good strategy for him. Um, I've got a way to do it if you want to use three pets to do it. But using a carry pet, it's it's really tricky. Um, you want a red cricket? I don't have one. So uh, I go for a slightly different approach, and we'll see how well it works. I recommend doing this when your carry pet's pretty high level so that he can help out a little bit. Tell me of your troubles. May the mists protect you. But uh, the first one is aquatic, and the the raven just absolutely destroys aquatic pets. So you're wanna, hoping for a super hard hitting nocturnal strike. Sometimes it's even worth it to, to start over until that crits. Again, I apologize for how crappy this strategy is. Because it is pretty crappy since it isn't even solid and the only one I know that works good takes three pets to do. And I can't switch. We'll just do as much damage as we can in the time that we can do it. Alright, so, that, I don't know why he casts Sandstorm, it's kind of dumb. We're going to switch over here, and um, I'm actually going to try and do this without switching and using the Carry Pet's abilities, but uh, you can also use a Sea Pony instead of this if you want to. That works fairly well in most cases. But because of his AoE damage, you do want your pet to be a little ways up. Uh, I, I wish I had a good strategy for these guys, but there there just isn't a good two-pet strategy that I've come across with pets that I've got. And even, even the strategy I've seen that uses the red cricket is iffy in my mind.
you just kind of have to play it right with that guy. So once he's gone, this guy is actually not too bad. He's just going to do his little disco ball thing. So as long as you can live long enough for Whirlpool to resolve, you should be okay. But having a high level third pet really helps in the long run of things. And uh, to be fair, I wouldn't have had to do this guy if I'd have remembered to have Moon Moon out during that first fight. So we'll just call this even. How's that? Moonfire! Oh, I didn't even need Geyser. So, there we go. Moon Moon is now 25. Leveled up, and I didn't even use the Pandaren Spirits. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope it's useful to you, even though my strategy for Wastewalker Shoe is terrible. But what can you do? Um, please share with your friends so that they can learn the, the secrets of pet battling. And go ahead and click on like for the video and subscribe so that you can see when the next one comes out. The new patch is right around the corner and that's going to bring a ton of new stuff and Warlords of Draenor coming out is going to bring like a, a metric ton. Is that more than a normal ton? I'm ashamed that I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. Anyway, much new stuff coming. Share and subscribe with your friends so that we can all have a jolly good time. Okay, thanks, bye.